What up, Dom Mafia? And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into exactly why Bobby McCain is hawking loogies at children, and then more importantly, the three things that we learned during that Dolphins game, and it's starting right now. Okay, okay, I get it. We did not embarrass the Dolphins. And but in my defense, I am not the only media personality that got it wrong. In fact, I'm pretty sure everybody that covers football, professional, or amateur said the exact damn thing as me. And we didn't embarrass the Dolphins. That's just the cold hard truth, but we did win and we're five and one. That's all that matters. And in this episode, like I said, we're gonna be discussing three things that we learned as a Buffalo Bills team going into week eight against the Eagles. Uh, but first, Bobby McCain, a 26 year old safety of the Miami Dolphins, did not have a good day. Mostly because he blew a fourth quarter lead and his team is now 0 6. I wouldn't chalk that up as a great Sunday. And but apparently the frustration did not start there. Before the game even started, a young 13 year old boy shouts at the Dolphins, you are irrelevant. That didn't sit too kindly with Mr. McCain. In fact, after that, he pretended to hawk six loogies at this kid. He channeled his inner seventh grader and was just trying to torment this kid. He was trying to uh, threaten bodily fluid assault right at that kid, but didn't do it, you know? So soon as after McCain pretended to spit on this 13 year old, a concerned fan screams down to the tunnel, dude, what's wrong with you? Is this the type of example you're trying to set for the kid? Which seems reasonable, right? I mean, sticking up for children, it's a no brainer. But who were to know that sticking up for children came with a very disgusting price? Because after the game, McCain went back to that same fan and hawked a big one right in his face. And so it's not even like this guy was hackled again. This guy had an agenda. The second that Mika Hyde took that onside kick back to the house and sealed the Buffalo Bills victory, this guy legitimately took it upon himself, ran to that exact same fan, just did his thing. And so McCain was questioned after this. He was quoted in saying, I regret the incident that happened to me and the fan yesterday after the game. I wish I would have handled myself better. I spoke with Coach Flores today. We're on the same page. We're looking forward to Pittsburgh and going through preparation. If this says anything, Pittsburgh fans, watch out. There's no telling what my man's gonna do next Sunday. So now on to our main story. The three things that we learned from the Buffalo Bills mostly piss poor performance this past Sunday. I know a lot of you in the comments who are trolling the hell out of me, especially when the Bills were down, but before I even get into these reasons, I was not worried once. Maybe during that third quarter offensive drive by Fitzmagic for about five seconds, but then miraculously Trey White makes a fantastic play and the entire momentum switched over. We should have won that game handedly, but it was a lot closer than one would anticipate. So anyway, here are the three things that we learned. The first thing that we've learned, or maybe even reinforced, that this is a fourth quarter team. For some reason, our offense can't do anything unless we're down by 10 points and there's 10 minutes left on the clock. It's getting to a point where I almost suggest automatically giving the opposing team seven points before the game even starts. Because that just seems to be the juice and the inspiration that we need to actually play competent offense. Now don't get me wrong, these finishes are absolutely exciting. Not good for everybody's health, but very exciting. And it's really crazy, especially when you look at Josh Allen. The first three quarters, Josh did not look good at all. I mean, there was no turnovers. I mean, that was fantastic. But I mean, he just wasn't hitting a lot of receivers. There was a couple drops by Dawson Knox. One in particular, I believe it was in the second drive, which was kind of abysmal and wasn't Josh's fault at all. But regardless, was not the quarterback that we wanted to be out there. Until the fourth quarter. Dude went 10 for 11, 122 yards, two touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. And his third overall come from behind victory. I mean, for some reason in the fourth quarter, he's just an entire different guy. And Josh wasn't the only one that decided to perform right in the fourth quarter. It was our defense. They were largely struggling. We had a very difficult time stopping the run game, stopping Fitz magic. But then the fourth quarter comes around and we see the Bills defense that we have known for all season. 
Once the fourth quarter hits, we see our team's true potential. And one particular thing that pisses me off is, especially when it comes to most media outlets, to some of our fans, they're looking at these fourth quarter come from behind victories like they are a problem, like they are a sign of a weak team. Complete hypocrisy. Let's say, for example, that the Patriots were doing this, or the Ravens were doing this, or the Seahawks were doing this. Everybody would be on their cocks saying how resilient this team is, how no matter how much the opposing team is up, this team is still going to win, or they have a very good chance of doing that. And they would recognize them as a great team. And that's exactly what the Buffalo Bills are. Yes, we haven't really played um, strong opponents quite yet. But at the end of the day, we're coming back and we're winning. It doesn't matter how much we are down. We are going to win. We are going to make plays on the defensive and the offensive side of the ball, even if it is in the fourth quarter. You can never count us out. And that's what makes a great football team. And that's exactly why the Bills are 5-1. and one. And you know, there's probably several reasons why the defense struggled against the Miami Dolphins this past Sunday. But most notably, it was the absence of Matt Milano. And so as I'm sure you know, Milano suffered a hamstring injury against the Tennessee Titans before the bye week. He was questionable to play on this Sunday, but he wasn't quite ready. And I guess they had Maurice Alexander filling in for him, and Milano's absence was very well recognized. Now, I mean, the Dolphins were running all over us. Fitz was dropping very good passes to his receivers, and they were sustaining long-ass drives, 9 to 10 minutes, which is something that we do not want to make a habit of. If this has proven anything, then it is proven that we have a serious depth problem when it comes to our defense. Yes, we have a top three, maybe even best defense in the entire league, but we really don't have a lot of depth, especially when it comes to our defense. So God forbid that one of our key players suffer an injury sometime midway during the season, that's going to open up a lot of holes for other teams to take advantage of. So whether or not that we take advantage of this through the trade deadline, through next off season, and just pray to the football gods that no one significant on our defense gets hurt, it's something that we need to address. And we also need to hope that Matt Milano is back for the Philadelphia game, because if not, Howard is going to have a very similar game to what the running backs on Miami had this past Sunday. Now, this is an interesting take. In fact, I was watching a video uh, from the YouTubers Hashtag Sports about Brian Dable. They made some really, really good points. And say, for example, that you want a more in-depth explanation of how Dable is essentially f***ing us, then you can check that video out. That link's in my description. Now, regardless, Dable is making some questionable decisions. Most notably, refusing to run the ball. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that this was a huge complaint of Bills fans throughout the past couple of seasons, how uh, we, we don't pass enough. But I feel like you need to find a happy medium here. Frank Gore is having a great season at his age. Devin Singletary has proven to be a very, very good draft pick, full of talent, and most likely the future of our run game. And so, but our rushing attempts are down. I could see if Frank Gore and Devin Singletary were averaging about one or two yards per carry. Then yeah, most definitely. Hit the air and just take advantage of, you know, just Beasley and John Brown do that. But that's far from the case. Frank is having a great per yard average this year. And same thing with Devin Singletary. And it blows my mind why we're not running the ball more often than we do. And opposing defenses, no matter who the team, know that the Buffalo Bills are 75% of the time going to the air which regardless of the talent on that defense, it's very easy to make adjustments to that and be able to eventually shut it down or at least dwindle down that production. So by creating more rushing attempts, this is going to further confuse the defenses and open up the field for Josh Allen to make those big plays that everyone is criticizing him for not making. It's because he's going to the air too much and we're not utilizing the run game. Defenses know what we're going to do. You can adjust to that. I mean, it's just mediocre for the most part, but then all of a sudden the Bills come out and they have an entire different playbook and Josh Allen looks like an MVP. And you know, I'm just fully convinced that Josh Allen ignores Brian Dable in the fourth quarter. 
And so honestly, Dable has been a question mark. He really has. Out of the five teams that we have played, the most production that he has put on the board was 28 points. And these teams, might I say, are not playoff teams whatsoever. And the best he can do is 28 points. That's an issue. It's not Josh Allen. It's not a receiving core. There's nothing wrong with our offense. I just think that the play calls are not where they need to be. And the jury is still out on this guy. But luckily, we have an elite defense that is going to keep us in the game. And as long as Dable can just score enough points to win, then I personally could care less. And he's done that so far. We're five and one. But the jury's still out, and we'll see exactly what happens moving forward. Now, guys, those are the three things that we ended up learning from the Dolphins game this past week. Now, I know. I know that a lot of you are disappointed that we didn't destroy or embarrass the Dolphins this past week. So was I. You know, I mean, that was something that I would have liked to see at the end of the day. But one other thing that you need to consider is we just got off of a bye week. There is such thing as bye week rusts. I'm not sure about you, but during your jobs and you get back into the office, your first day back is going to be a little rusty. And I mean, that's exactly what happened to our boys right then and there. It is the NFL, guys. You know, I mean, it is any given Sunday. The Dolphins just played us hard. I mean, they're fighting for their lives. I mean, they don't want to go winless. They don't. There's no way. They're professional athletes. They're professional competitors. They want to win. So they played us hard. They really did. And I mean, it's just how it's going to be in the season. At the end of the day, the one thing that you need to look at is, is that we are 5-1. and one, And we need to relish in that. Because our team is finally looking like a competitor. And that's something that I think that us Bills fans need to realize is, stop being so pessimistic. Look at what we have. We have a team that's resilient, and we have a team that no matter what, we're in the game. And this season has proved that. Regardless of how many points we're beating them by, we're coming out on top. So now we just got to focus on the Philadelphia Eagles. Be on the lookout. I will have a preview video out with that. I am collabing with somebody else this week. Um, I will keep that a secret until the video does drop. But if you're not a part of the Dumb Mafia, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and just join the family. Let's go Buffalo.